Here are a couple of new examples that I've added for this section since I made that last video. Uh, we have here a verify problem. It says uh, verify that the cotangent of x minus the tangent of y is equal to cosine of x plus y over sine of x times cosine of y. And I think you'll agree with me that the right side is the more complicated side, but also the right side is the side that allows us to use the new identity we just learned. So let's uh, start by trying to make the right side of our identity look like the left side. And uh, we'll just use our cosine of a plus b identity on this. So we know that uh, cosine of x plus y is going to be cosine x cosine y minus sine of x sine of y. That's copied straight off the formula sheet. And all we did there was use the cosine of a plus b identity and don't forget your denominator. Okay, now notice that our numerator contains two terms, so we can use our trick of splitting the fraction into two pieces. Notice that when I split the fraction, each new fraction gets the same denominator that the original expression had. And now these will simplify very nicely. The cosine of y cancels out from the first term, and the sine of x cancels out from the second term. And notice here what we've got, uh, cosine x over sine x, that's going to become cotangent x. And here sine of y over cosine of y is going to become tangent of y. And that was our quotient identities that allowed us to do that. So these are not so bad. I think these are actually a little easier than the verify problems in section 5.2 because you don't have as many choices. You pretty much only have one way to go here. You pretty much have to use your cosine of a plus b identity. All right, let's look at another one. This one says, verify that the cosine of pi over 2 plus x is equal to the negative sine of x. And this one's just a very straightforward application of the identity as well. So it, notice that it looks like an a plus b kind of situation. So you'll need to use your cosine of a plus b identity, where pi over 2 will be the a and x will be the b. Um, so it's going to become... cosine a cosine b minus sine a sine b. So cosine pi over 2 cosine x minus sine pi over 2 sine x. And that's just using the identity off the formula sheet. Um, now let's evaluate the values that we know. We know that cosine of pi over 2 is cosine of 90 degrees. Cosine is the horizontal coordinate on the unit circle. So the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And the sine of pi over 2 is like sine of 90, and sine is the vertical coordinate, so that's going to be 1. And now anything times 0 is 0, so that's going to cancel out. And that's just going to leave us with negative 1 sine x, or negative sine x. And that's all there is to that. So, um, you know, I had a graduate school professor that told us uh, in the class he was teaching, he said... When the only tool you have is a hammer, you have to treat every problem like a nail. And I thought that was great advice because in this section, we only have one tool. We only have the cosine of A plus B identity. So we kind of have to treat every problem like a nail. We have to hit it with that identity because that's all we've got. And it works every time. Is Every time you have this A plus B kind of argument or A minus B, you pick one of your... Uh, identities, either the cosine of a plus b or the cosine of a minus b, and you run it through the identity and the answer will pop out every time. All right, good luck. Reach out and let us know if we can help you.